<sighs> so shit, man. Never again. What's going on, doggies? And welcome to a noodle rod session. So it's just you, me, and the noodle rod in the absolute middle of nowhere. It is dry as hell out here. It's hot. I've been walking, hoofing it through. I don't even know what you'd call this. It looks like, feels like I'm in bloody Africa. I've been walking for three to four hours now trying to find clear water. It's slowly getting clear. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna start fishing, but it's late afternoon. My bike is, um, my bike is, like I said, a three to four hour walk that way. So now this is gonna turn into an overnight thing. I'm just gonna sleep here tonight. I have absolutely nothing. So it's gonna be an interesting sleep. All I've got is this backpack, the noodle rod, and these clothes that I'm wearing. So we're just going to literally sleep on the rocks, lay on the rocks, fall asleep, wake up in the morning and continue this noodle rod session because I haven't even really fished today. I've got one long tom this morning casting this little lure. So uh, we're really close to the water. It looks a lot clearer now. So this water, it's still not really crystal clear, but it's a lot clearer than it was up that way. Cactus everywhere. Oh, this is what I love doing, eh? This is exploring. So it actually looks kind of clear. It's not as clear as it should be, but it is still pretty clear. So the reason that the water's not clear is that we've had rain inland, like inland of the island had rain. And when we get rain inland, the water comes down all these little rivers and opens up to the ocean. And then you get this like muddy, dirty, clay colored water and I suppose it's mixed with the fresh water and it comes out and it just floods the coastline of the whole island which just it just sucks for fishing so that's why I've been walking for so many hours today trying to find clean water and I think we're just on the edge of the clean water now and here she is so a lot of people ask me what this rod is right so this is a storm discovery storm discovery ultra light spin series it's six six long the line is one to four pound so one to four pound is, it's so, it is like super light. If you know what PE means in fishing, like PE two, four, six, eight, ten, this is PE 0.6. So this is like thinner than dental floss. Like this is the thinnest, thinnest line. And these lures that you use are tiny. Like this is a really small little, this is what I got the long time on this morning. It's a tiny little lure. But um, it is by far my favorite rod and reel to use. It's so fun, it's light. You can cast it all day, it doesn't hurt your back. It's just the dream setup. So for the people who want to know what it is, it's a storm discovery. Such a sick little rod. Oh yeah, and I'm not getting paid to say that either. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. You know when you watch videos and people are like, this isn't it, this isn't an advert or whatever. Yeah, no, I'm not getting paid to say that. It's just my general, I actually love using this little thing. So let's put it to work. Let's see if we can get some dinner because now my plans have completely changed. I need to find somewhere to sleep tonight. I've got nothing to sleep on. Now it's going to get exciting. I've literally wasted a whole day just walking, but that's all good. All right, it's uh, very, very quiet. And another thing that the problem is, big, big tides today, and it's going to like low tide now. So it's super low tide. So pretty much everything right now is against us. All right, let's go. There is uh, not a lot happening there. I kind of want to punch up the coast there and find a little bit of a spot where I can sort of make a base camp now because, because we're going to stay the night. I kind of want to find somewhere where we can have a fire. Like there's a lot, oh no. <laughs> there's lots of stuff that we can eat if we don't get a fish. I'm not so, so much worried about food, but there is a shitload of food we can eat. There's cactus, there's oysters, there's lots of little fish in here. Not really fussed about food. Just want to get a fish on the noodle rod. I've literally been here all day and we've got no fish. I haven't been fishing, I've been walking, so. And another thing that you guys ask me all the time is what do I actually have inside this backpack when I do these trips? So maybe this afternoon or tomorrow morning or at some point, we'll, I'll empty this bag out on the ground and I'll show you everything that I take on a trip like this. Slippery as shit right now. <laughs> I'm gonna 
case it properly. Yeah, right -o. Oh man, this is so slippery. <laughs> How am I gonna stand on this rock? Here we go. I've made it to the platform. Come on, big dog. Oh, there we go. There's a long tom right there. Look at him. <laughs> Come on, look at it. Had one little, one little crack and then bug it off. Mate, if we get a long time, that's going straight on the fire. Just there. As soon as it hits the water, they attack it. Look, ready? Yes, come on. <laughs> come on. So there was a couple of little super aggressive long tom there, but they're really small. Like, if you don't know what a long tom looks like, it's part of the garfish family. So it's like a long, it's a long skinny fish. And then it's got a mouth which is just full. It's like, not, not even a mouth, it's more like a beak. It's like a bird's beak, which is full of these tiny little pins of teeth. And trying to set a hook like that in tight in this inside the fish's little mouth is like it's so bloody hard so we'll just keep pushing on there's a lot out there but they're pretty small so i think what i'm what i'm going to do in the future is invest in a pole spear like if i had a pole spear i could just be out there spearing fish right now cooking a fire that sounds so good to me like i want to get myself a pole spear but do it like primitive like no flippers no weight belt, like still go primitive style, but just have the spear, you know? Well, I'm just spitting everywhere. Like, yeah, that'll be sick. Maybe I'm gonna look into getting a pole spear. Ah, oh, looks like we might be going hungry tonight. Who knows? So, so after about 375,000 casts, probably even more, we've just got our first fish for the day. Now this little thing is called a gurnard, and um, you can eat them, they're pretty good, people say they're good eating, they're really good bait, but they're super bony, so this is what a gurnard looked like, just have a look at the teeth in this thing, but man, that thing is like a full-on dinosaur. That is gnarly, so... We've got this little fish, I'm not going to keep him, I'm going to quickly put him back in the water, but that's what a gurnard looks like. Pretty gnarly looking creature. Hectic mouth. Whoa, hey, chill out, buddy. All right, let's get him back in the water. So that's a gurnard. Go back to hassle some little bait fish. See you, mate. I am, right now, I am completely winging it. I've got no idea what I'm doing right now. So. It's so weird when you try to plan something, like I wanted to be fishing here at high tide, but obviously I was walking away from that dirty water at high tide and I've missed the tides. Now I'm a good, a good, good, good steam back to my bike. So by the time I walk to my bike, it's gonna be dark. I am just gonna sleep, I reckon right here. This right here is gonna be my bedroom for the night. Like this looks, this will be kind of comfortable. It's like small pebbles. Make that nice and flat. So I'll just lay there. I'll sleep there. We can start a little fire down here. Maybe it'll keep the bugs away at night. And we've got heaps of cactus. So you can't eat this cactus. This is obviously extremely old. Like look how skinny it is. Ah. So that'll keep the bloody Sasquatch away tonight. Hopefully. <laughs> Let's go get some firewood. Alright, so this is already starting to look like a little bit of a house. We've got, this is our fireplace. That's going to be the bedroom for the night. We've got our big sticks here. It's not really, <laughs> it's 
not really neatly put there, but whatever, that's probably enough enough for the afternoon. Maybe I'll go get a bit more for tonight, but here's our fire. I'll light that in just a minute. What do I have in my backpack? Like, what do I carry in this bag on a trip like this? So I'll open up the bag now. I'll show you guys what's inside. All right, so this is actually a pretty sick bag. These two front pockets here are what I use every day. So zinc or sun cream. Actually, a funny story about this, right? Every time I see this or I put this on, it makes me happy because the only time I wear this is when I'm going fishing or going to the beach surfing. So this little stick here is a stick of happiness. Every time I wear it, it makes me happy. So we've got zinc, sun cream. We've got a lighter. I've got no idea whose lighter that is. That's not my lighter, but we've got a lighter. Asthma puffer. And the good old pocket knife. So that's everything in that pocket. In this pocket, we have a super, super basic first aid kit. There is like Panadol, Band-Aids, um, tape, just like skin prep, just a very basic, very, very basic first aid kit. Oh, here's my lighter. So this lighter is interesting, right? It's got about three to four meters, no, maybe three meters of a super strong nylon string there. And then it's got another, I don't know, 12 wraps of duct tape around it so this duct tape comes in handy so much so whenever i'm out fishing or camping or something i can just pick off a bit of this duct tape here and like it just it comes in handy so often like a small bit of duct tape like this you just rip it off the lighter and you can fix something or you stick something to something it is actually very handy so that's a good idea to do in the bush this pocket what's that little bit of toilet paper. You can't go anywhere without toilet paper, mate. But the main reason for this is starting fires when everything's wet. I'll keep it in a plastic bag so it stays dry. So that's everything out of those two pockets. This, oh, what have, see I've got stuff everywhere. This here is salt, pepper, soy sauce, coffee, toothpick, a little dry bag to keep the coffee, not so the coffee doesn't get, and the salt doesn't go sticky. So that's another good thing to keep. And then in here we've got, man, I've got some random stuff, eh? A little bit of string. Oh, this is some rubbish I picked up off the beach, but that comes in handy. And then duct tape. <laughs> duct tape, I don't even know I had that. And then this is where the business is. So this is where I keep spare GoPro. I've got a head torch. Um, GoPro head strap. Uh, another torch. So, there's a lot of stuff in here. What's this? I was like a windsock for the GoPro, drone battery, and then I got my drone in this bag here, drone controller. And then these are just two bags full of GoPro batteries. That's batteries, that's batteries. In this pocket we have keys for the bike, keys for my house. What else we got? A little bit of, little bit of cash in there. All right, let's go into the next pocket up. What have we got here? We've got barley coffee, favorite, a mask. Yeah, good on your Corona. Um, more tape. I don't really know why I have half of the stuff in here. Fishing pliers, another uh, split ring pliers for the little baby split rings. Scissors, uh, fishing rod wraps, batteries in there. What's this, soft plastics. All right, let's open up this big pocket. So this is actually a very handy pocket. You can fit so much stuff in here. So I've got, <laughs> that's all the water I've got until, well, until I leave here. So that's all the water I've got for tonight. Got a tackle box with fishing lures. So this tackle box has got, I don't know, just random, just a complete random array of lures, squid jigs. Just really, really random stuff. There's that lure that we found from last episode. We've got the leader for the noodle rod. Now this is the noodle rod lure box. So in here we've got our smaller lures, our little diving lures, little baby plastics. That's in that side, little poppers. Just enough fishing lure, just enough fishing gear to get you through a day. And then on this side you've got like micro jigs, which are like super micro jigs, that's tiny jig heads you know all oh, just enough stuff to get you through i always carry a mask in this bag just in case 
And then we've just got our fishing rod holder, our rod sleeve, and last but not least, a raincoat. So I'll keep this out because this raincoat is all I've got to sleep on tonight. So we'll leave that there. But I like to keep all of this stuff in this bag because this bag's usually the bag that I do like big, big missions with. It's not when I do like solo survival missions when I take just a pocket knife. Obviously I don't take any of this crap, but when I do like a mission like today, I like to have all this stuff because if you're prepared and like right now, I'm actually going to be sleeping here, which I had no idea I was going to do this tonight. Like everything here now comes in handy. Like this light is going to come in handy to start a fire. This mask is not going to come in handy, but you know what I mean? Like if I hurt myself or whatever, in the morning I've got coffee here and I've got coffee here. All we need to do is go find a can to boil the water in. So it's good to be prepared, you know, like I've got a headlight for tonight. I don't know, I just like to have this stuff always in my bag, all the time. I just pick up this bag and go, it never leaves this bag. <laughs> so much easier with a lighter. I haven't started a fire with a lighter for a long time. Usually in these videos we start fires like, obviously if you guys watch the channel you know we watch start it with bottles and stuff, but the luxury of having a lighter in your bag is, oh, it's bloody beautiful. That's pumping. This wood is insane. This is like seriously, seriously dry wood. Then again, it is like boiling hot right now. All right, so now I'm starting to froth. I'm getting back into my, my little vibe. This is the, my favorite thing to do in the world, apart from surfing, fishing, and just being in the ocean, this right now is my favorite thing to do. Like the old, this is the ultimate freedom. There's no one telling you what to do. There's no cars, there's no traffic lights, there's no bullshit. This is the best thing ever. And there's actually one more pocket in that bag, which I haven't shown you guys. It's not really an exciting pocket, but I haven't showed you all the pockets. There's one left. So this bag has a laptop pocket. And in the laptop pocket, I obviously don't keep a laptop, but I keep sandwich bags, which all right, stay there. So I keep sandwich bags, which when I put fish fillets in these, I obviously take them home, then we wash them and we reuse them to try to keep the plastic down. And in here, I've got a bin bag. All right, so it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good, Jesus Christ, I'm gonna get out of this smoke. Whee! It's gonna be good if I can actually eat something. Like I was just thinking, there's heaps of crabs over there, but they're like little baby crabs. There's, and again, there are snails everywhere. So maybe later tonight I'll eat snails. But while I've got probably 20 minutes of light left. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna chuck my mask on and I'll quickly run out there. Why is this so smoky? What are you doing? I'm gonna run out there and um, swim out there and see if I can get like a sea urchin or a couple of, I don't know, snails that we can eat for dinner or, I don't know. I gotta go, I'm running out of time, but I'm just gonna leave the camera here. That was hard work, but look at this big mama. We got a sea urchin. This is gonna taste so good. All right, I'm gonna cut him open. Yeehoo! I tell you what, if starfish were edible, we would be eating like kings right now. There are so many starfish out there, like big, big, big blue starfish everywhere, all over the bottom. And I was out there for about, I don't know, 20 minutes, 20, 15 to 20 minutes. I've seen one urchin the whole time. So we've got him and we're going to cut him up. So the first thing we do, we're going to cut the spikes off it. And this is why it is so good to have everything in one backpack. So when you do these adventures, you just grab it and go because you need scissors for this. And I've got scissors, so it's just convenient. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is cut off all of these spikes. But make sure you don't do this anywhere near your camp or anywhere where other people are going to walk because if you get these things in your feet i tell you what it's not fun so it's probably really bloody hard to see me right now because it's actually really dark so i've just gone and cut the sea ocean in half what you want to do is eat this little bit inside i don't know if you can see this but it's like a i'll try to get it out i don't even know if you guys can see me it seems 
pretty dark for a GoPro, but this is what we want to be eating. This here. These are beautiful. This is gonna this is gonna give me a mad little taste for the night. So you get I think six or eight of these around the whole thing, and that there. Oh man, I love it. I just want to like roll it around in my mouth. It tastes like um I don't even know what it tastes like. Creamy fish, creamy something. Very creamy, strong taste. So good, man. So there's another piece. It's pretty good. Yeah, baby, burn, baby, burn. Wow, these leaves go up like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> All right, this is me for the night. I'm literally just gonna sit here, try to dry my shorts is the first thing I wanna do. If I can dry my shorts, that's going to be beautiful because it's going to be an uncomfortable sleep with these wet shorts on, but I'm just going to um, sit here, sit around the fire and just chill, like just soak it in and probably have an early night. There's nothing else to do now, so I guess I'll see you guys in the morning and we'll go from there. I've got no idea what we're going to do tomorrow, so it's going to be very interesting. All right, doggies, good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Yo. Oh, this is, this is by far... The worst night's sleep I've ever, ever had. I am getting, I am getting eaten alive by mosquitoes right now. I can't, I can't sleep. I've got a bin bag over my legs just so the fucking mozzies, they stop biting me. I have bites like literally I'm trying to tuck my hands in. Oh, it's just so shit. I've packed up pretty much. I went and packed up my fishing rod. I've, packed up everything I was gonna walk out of here but what's the point like I think it's like 12 o'clock at night now 11 11:49. so I don't know I've packed up my stuff I was gonna walk out of here but sort of like the bin bag stops the mozzies this is stopping them but I'm just I'm like sweating bullets right now I've got a raincoat on and a bin bag covering my legs and I'm sweating bullets, so, uh, I don't know. It's gonna be a shit night. Oh, so shit, man. Never again. Good morning. Um, that was up there with one of the most haggard sleeps I've ever had. Ever, 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 I like. The mozzies here are so thick. I tried rubbing leaves on my legs. I tried rubbing, like getting the sap out of the leaves, different, different leaves through the night, rubbing it all over my legs, my hands. Oh man, it was bad, but the sun's coming up now. It's just started, well, it's not up yet, but the sky's getting nice and blue. I'm not gonna let last night's shit sleep ruin today's mission. We need to get a fish on the noodle rod. I didn't really sleep last night. It was kind of like I'd do, I'd like nod off and then I'd just wake up because I was either sweating my ass off in that plastic bag or I was getting bitten by mosquitoes. So the only thing I don't have in that backpack is mozzie spray. So that is the um, first thing I'm going to put back in there is the mosquito spray. I don't know where it went. I don't know. I've been sitting on this rock just kind of like watching the sun rise. I don't know if you guys can see it now, but that sun is just starting to rise behind me. So. Oh, man, I am so tired. I'm not feeling the vibes from this place after last night, so I'm gonna hoof it out of here. Let's go somewhere different. Hopefully we can get a fish on the noodle rod. <laughs> ah, what a, what a bloody night that was. Okay, I'm literally just gonna punch it back to my bike. I'm back in the um, African plains again, so big walk ahead of me. Hopefully we'll go find some water. Hopefully someone sells coffee around where my bike is and we'll start our day fresh. We'll start on a new leaf and we'll, uh, we'll get a little bend in this little baby, hopefully. Let's do this. We'll see you guys on the other side, wherever, wherever we end up. Yo!
What we've done, the wind's picked up, right? So as I was walking back to the bike, the wind was started really starting to squall and it was picking up. So I was like, all right, we'll go inland and we'll do some freshwater fishing. So today we're fre fishing for something called a snakehead. And this is so much fun. So what we're doing, we've got this little like frog lures and these things weigh absolutely nothing. That's why the noodle rod comes in handy because I can cast anything on this and I can cast it far. So as you would have just seen when I had the seagull in the sky, all these little pools of water, when it floods, they fill up. When it, when it floods, the water comes up and the snakehead move from pond to pond. And then obviously the water goes away and they're stuck in these little ponds. So what we're going to do today, we'll just walk around and we'll just flick this little frog in each of these ponds and hopefully we can get a snakehead. Like, I don't know, it's pretty hard going. I've been here before, we've got two, so. But it is a really, really fun way to fish and if you get one, it's just like, hell yeah, boy. So let's try, let's see if we can get a snakehead. I'm going to start flicking this frog. I'm so tired, I can't even speak. Flicking this frog around and hopefully we'll get one. Let's go. You're joking. All right, just to make the day a little bit more interesting. I've got my little frog and it's stuck on this stick there and I can't get to it, so I've got this massive ass log. What we're trying to do is push this log, <laughs> this is going to end in disaster, out there. Then I'm going to try to balance on this log. Oh yeah, this ain't going to work. I've got to go all the way to the end of the log, pull my line, get the stick, snap the stick, get my frog back. Alright, we're looking good. Oi. Come on frog, come here. Oh no, I'm going down. Oh, oh, this sucks. Come on. Oh, I'm so close. Oh, this is the world's prickliest tree. Get off. Look at the prickles on this thing, dude. Oh my God. I come in peace. <laughs> Look at this thing, it's about to charge at me. Stay there. Crazy cows, man. Well, I tell you what, the day is definitely getting on and I've had no luck on this frog. Changed colors, changed the lure. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I've seen one good sized snakehead but he just wasn't feeding, so I don't know what's going on, man. It's really, really weird, but I'll show you guys this frog. It's pretty sick. So the reason that I can cast like over this vegetation and just pop it back is because that's what the frog looks like. There's no, it, the hooks aren't exposed, so it's just getting pulled over the weeds and it doesn't get caught. But this is super soft, so when the frog fish comes in, boom, it bites it. Those two hooks there become exposed and that's how you hook it. So we've got snakehead here before and uh, I don't know what's going on right now but I've definitely done some miles about 3,000 casts nothing Look at that little frog butt that's gonna get belted come on dude I literally just saw these three guys with car batteries on their backs like hooked on their backs like a backpack and then they had these like two metal rods and I was like, what are they doing with them? And then they walk up to the water, like into the weeds and they obviously like electrocute the water and then the, these little fish 
heaps of little fish were floating and this guy with a net was just collecting them and they were like pillaging like proper like i don't know if it kills the fish but it obviously was shocking them so man i got how's field day supposed to get a fish on the frog if these guys are using car batteries man so we've been flicking this frog around for five hours and uh not even one hit nothing so i'm done i'm calling it unfortunately we didn't get to put a bend in the beloved noodle rod so devo but um that's fishing man that's especially fishing here it is thrashed out like there is land-based fishing here is extremely hard but it's challenging and it's all about the adventure for me i love doing these adventures so thanks for watching much love and i will see you in the next one yeah doggies Ow!